Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is March 4th, 2024, and let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So I'm going to do a very quick map update, and it's going to be a very short video. So first, I want to talk about the Avdivka sector. And of course, we know that Avdivka fell to the Russians a few weeks ago, and unfortunately, the Russians have been able to gain some ground in the outskirts of the city for the last few weeks. But it's been confirmed by the Ukraine military that they have managed to stabilize the line about four to five kilometers outside of Avdivka. And this is exactly in the area that I was telling you guys a few videos ago uh, around the Berdichi to Pervomaiske line. So I'll take a look with you guys on the map. So I'll showcase where exactly that is. But I believe that the main reason is that the Russians have been having massive, massive losses in the outskirts of Avdivka. It's become a huge Russian graveyard. And we got a lot of great footage in the last few days of the destruction of several Russian units. As you can see, I've shared with you here uh, several pictures of um, and examples of what I'm talking about. So in the first picture is actually from a video that was released by the Ukraine forces, which uh, showed uh, Ukraine Bradley engaging a Russian BTR-82A, which was transporting Russian troops, and it got obliterated uh, by the Bushmaster cannon of the Ukrainian Bradley. And you can see that these are some of the losses that the Russians have had uh, during this battle. In the second picture, this is uh, the bread and butter of the Ukrainian uh, attacks uh, and responses against the Russian meat wave attacks. So this is uh, essentially a Russian squad sitting atop of a BMP getting targeted by an FPV drone, a Ukrainian FPV drone, essentially uh, killing all of the passengers on board. And the last picture is yet again another Russian convoy of armored vehicles. You can see that this is a most likely T-72 tank, uh, MTLB and some BMPs that got obliterated most likely by FPV drones and different types of drones as well. So it's become a massive Russian graveyard. And let's take a look where the Ukrainians have managed to stabilize the situation in the sector of Avdivka. So again, I've talked to you guys about the heights that the Ukrainians are currently controlling. Now, these are not insane heights, but this is giving an advantage for the Ukrainians uh, in terms of visibility, because between Avdivka and Berdichi, Semenivka, Numanske, you have these very flat fields, and there's also natural obstacles, uh, such as rivers and reservoirs, which are making the task more difficult for the Russians uh, to get over this sort of uh, hill that the Ukrainians currently control. So right now, the line has been stabilized for now, and the Ukrainians are just able to really strike at the uh, Russian offensives, whether it be heading towards Orlivka, towards Berdichi, or Tonyanke. So the Ukrainians are holding the line around here. So this is positive, but now there's news that the Russians ha have now moved most of their offensive operations in the south of Donetsk. So now there is more attacks towards Novomikhailivka. So this is in the southern sector of Donetsk, and you can see that the Russians are now pushing in this settlement to try to gain uh, the settlement and continue pushing through uh, Paraskovivka, Konstanivka. So uh, this is the new sort of Russian offensive. So they're able to constantly move their reserves, move their troops because they have Donetsk. And Donetsk offers them a great uh, sort of base where they can launch multiple offensives. And they have a lot of road connections, railway connections. And overall, this is a very well set up um, area for the Russians. So that's why they've been having some success in the last few months in this sector. Apart from that, the other very hot point for the Russians right now is in Orikhiv, the Orikhiv sector. For now, the Russians have been trying to take the village of Robotene, essentially reverse the Ukraine gains from the summer counteroffensive of last year. But they have been unsuccessful for now to take Robotene. They're complaining a lot that the Ukrainians have mined the fields outside of Robotene and they're flying hundreds of drones per day and attacking these Russian offensives uh, and armored vehicles. They're trying to take position in the village, but they get automatically destroyed through uh, various Ukrainian drones. So, so far, the Ukrainians are also able to hold the line in this sector. And this is a realization that NATO needs to have. If in the foreseeable future, Russia attacks a NATO country, Russia will exclusively count on its quantity, not quality. And whether they have T-55s or old tanks like T-62s and MTLBs, they'll continue just pushing them and moving them, and they don't care about the quality of their troops. 
And unfortunately, Russia has still millions of men that they can mobilize and recruit for their war efforts. And this is a realization that NATO needs to have is that they need to be prepared for that and not think that somehow the losses um, will be a factor for the Russians to stop. They won't. So this is the situation right now at the two main, um, you know, essential offensives that the Russians are currently conducting in the Orykhiv sector and also in the Donetsk sector. So in the north of Donetsk and the south of Donetsk. And also right now, the last offensive that the Russians are really trying to, um, what where they're trying to create something is towards Bakhmut, uh, towards Chasivyar actually. So in the north of Bakhmut. This is where the Russians are really pushing hard to get closer and closer to Chasivyar. So um, again, it's the same situation here. The Ukrainians are trying to hold the line with just FPV drones and some ammunition, but the Ukrainians have been reduced to using about 1,000 to 2,000 rounds per day throughout the front line. So this is very difficult considering that the Russians are using somewhere around 15,000 uh, rounds per day. So the Ukrainians still don't have parity. They don't have, um, you know, they're no match to what the Russians are still capable of throwing at the Ukrainians, especially the various rounds of uh, bombs, you know, they've been having a lot of jet fighters, uh, you know, launching FAB 500 glide bombs and different types of bombs, which are really making life difficult for the Ukrainians. So there needs to be a realization that um, for NATO to be prepared, they need to absolutely continue producing more and more ammunition and overwhelm the Russians with, art with artillery. So that's the situation on the front line. Now, I want to go back to the main slides because there's a few more things I want to talk about. And again, in my example of the graveyard that is currently in Avdivka, it is mainly thanks to not only the FPV drones, but also the Bradleys. The 47th Brigade, which is currently also fighting in the Avdivka sector, is operating several Bradleys. And Ukraine, if you guys remember, has received about 186 of them last year. Now, if we're counting the damaged and destroyed ones, Ukraine perhaps has less than 150 right now. Uh, but it just proves how effective these Bradleys, these Bradleys that have been developed in the 70s and 80s, and how essential they are for the Ukrainians to be able to defend. And they absolutely obliterate anything that the Russians are currently producing. And this is mostly old Soviet armor, whether it be BMPs or BTRs. Uh, they can just slice through their armor. And imagine if Ukraine would have been able to receive a thousand of these Bradleys rather than just a mere, you know, less than 200. What if we could multiply the amount that Ukraine receives by five or 10, right? Uh, it would really make a difference. And this would allow the Ukrainians to, um, to really stop any Russian advance and then pick up the initiative to start attacking the Russians along with air superiority when Ukraine receives the F-16s. And we know that the, the United States has thousands of them just sitting picking up dust. So I hope that perhaps this year uh, there will be an initiative to send more of these Bradleys and Abrams tanks uh, for the Ukrainians to operate them in uh, the various battlefields that they currently have. So the last thing I want to mention, and this is um, along with the news of Navalny being buried and you know the thousands of Russians standing in line to pay homage to Navalny, you guys know my position about Alexei Navalny, uh, although I do believe that some of his work was really great and he exposed the sheer corruption uh, that exists right now in the Putin uh, regime. He didn't really do much to support the Ukrainians. And this is an analogy that I want to bring with this news. So you can see that uh, some partisans in Russia actually blew up or, uh, or damaged a railway bridge that was used for transporting ammunition. This is somewhere in Samara Oblast. Now, you can see that the damage is pretty negligible and this most likely will be repaired in the next few weeks. Um, but imagine if these Russians are currently standing in line obediently uh, to lay flowers and screaming, you know, we hate Putin. What if they all started actually doing the same thing that these partisans are doing? This is the true change that needs to happen in Russia. Not, you know, Russians standing in line or, you know, uh, doing peaceful protests that go nowhere. This has been tried before and... It's not been effective and it's not effective because peaceful protests don't work against oppressive and brutal regimes. Navalny's, you know, Nelson Mandela moment didn't happen. Okay. 
And Russians must face reality that they actually need to fight. Not with words or gestures, but actually with actions. And this is the only way they can bring down the Putin regime at this point, is by blowing up bridges that are essential for, you know, uh, transporting ammunition or men, uh, destroying administrative buildings, military buildings, just really making life difficult for the Putin regime to continue with their war effort in Ukraine. So far, as far as I'm concerned, the Russians are unwilling to do this. And by default, these Russians are helping the Putin regime grow stronger and stronger because they continue to oppress further and further these people. And as unfortunate as it is, this is the only way for the Russians to change the situation, not by laying flowers and you know, lamenting the death of Navalny. This is, this is done, and they need to start act taking action. So let me know what you guys think about my comments uh, for this topic. Uh, again, a huge thank you for support. Uh, guys, continue donating uh, money for the Ukrainian war effort, uh, for the FPV drone production. The Ukrainians absolutely need your help. So guys, continue doing that. Continue supporting Ukraine. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, like my video, leave me a comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Slava Ukraini!